Okay. Hey guys, I'm going to make this super quick. I just got off my Patreon live with patrons and we were reading and I'm just going to do a share, nothing too personal. Um, but one of the cards did come out with someone's read. And then the other one was for the 777, which is absolutely fascinating. And it felt bigger than just the 777. So I thought I'd share really, really quickly, just because as information comes in, sometimes I feel guided to share some of the things that I'm seeing and feeling. So I'm going to do that really quick. Okay. So the first part that came out is, um, this deck is beautiful. I have to give credit where credit's due because one carries decks. It says the divine matrix. It says interconnectedness, synchronicities, and God incidences, like coincidences. So what I was feeling from this was first a personal message for her and whatever she was connecting to. But then I started to see it for what it was. And we talk a lot about the matrix. And I think what has happened is we've put a lot of blame on the matrix um and and maybe at that time rightfully so but what i think is happening is we're overriding and we're we're blaming the matrix but we're we're not seeing the actual divine nature see that is the flower of life that is the earth the grids the ley lines the natural resonance frequency that the earth produces that the galaxies the cosmos the sun produces this natural frequency that is in divine law and divine nature and balance and equilibrium and beauty and 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 wasn't inverted or distorted and we're still seeing both of these existing at once almost like an overlay so we're seeing the maybe the distorted matrice or the control grid whatever we want to call it whatever label that is but this still exists so what i think is happening with each and every energetic push or pull or combustion that we're going through we're starting to realize that we can see both and both are really apparent so we're actually given the opportunity or the choice to draw attention or pay attention to which one we want to pay attention to. Perfect example of this is our beautiful Joanne always says heaven on earth. Well, I, I believe that too. Heaven on earth it already exists. Have a beautiful day of heaven on earth. She says that to people. That's where her intentions are. That's where she exists. And, and we're seeing both at the exact same time. So are we still playing into this? That's just the question to ask. Am I still playing into this or am I feeling into this and playing into this? What is my reality? And wherever we're at or whatever's happening with all these gateways this summer, I think we're getting the opportunity to make those choices. There's there's not a wrong or right choice, but to maybe mo put more of our energy into this divine matrice that has the quantum computer, not a computer, but the quantum knowing and energy that is all and everything at once. And what do we want to create versus maybe what has been in control and giving more power to that as well. So it's almost like, which matrix are we focusing on? Because we forgot about this one. Not everyone, but just a thought. Oh, the matrix. Well, there's also this one, the divine matrix. Okay. okay. The next thing is we pulled as a group for the 777 uh, gateway, which I was feeling into this morning and I was getting hit a lot. <laughs> so first off, it says Akashic Stargate. Um, I had like kind of a conversation about this. The Akashic Records, beautiful, carries blueprints, memories, past, parallel, future, all that. For me, the Akashic feels beyond that. Um, that may be a library or space, but I feel like there's even deeper quantum knowing, quantum source that resides within us. Okay. So as we tap into these stargates, portals, whatever, whatever the heck is going on, look at how many are sitting here. Look at all the doorways. And we had a conversation too. Um, on Patreon, you know how the pole, like it took a long time for the pole to magnetically move over the years, but all of a sudden in 2020 to 2023, it's like the poles moving faster and faster and faster. And we're already at the 40 degree mark with the magnetosphere and, and the pole um, moving, moving. We're at a 40 degree mark or something like that. I don't necessarily like, but what I'm saying is they're closer together. That's the purpose of me saying that. Okay. Also, with everything that's happening this summer, right, from the solstice, from, from the 7-1 to the 7-7 seven, seven to Lionsgate, and Carrie has so much stuff going on with Lionsgate right now, I'll let her speak about it, but um, these are opportunities and energies, and which one do we like more, which door fits us, and the magnetic of the door, like which one's calling to you, all of these are opportunities, 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 so kind of what I was seeing on the solstice, if you watch that video with the rainbow, and each of these are okay, that's exactly what these stargates or, or, or gateways or portals, whatever we want to call. And I know there's a difference between stargates and portals, but what are we, what are we feeling? What resonates with us? It doesn't matter. There's no right or wrong, but with these gateways, they're opportunities. So it says aligned with purpose. Well, how do you find your purpose? I don't believe it's one purpose anymore. I don't believe that it's like, oh, this is my sole purpose. I think the magnetosphere of the heart brings you that door 
that magnetic door, the door opens and, and you just know with all of your being, that's the door for you, much like many things. It says crossroads with no wrong path. And I'm going to do a little share too, because that's, that's what I told my beautiful Patreon family too. No wrong path. Sometimes we take what looks like maybe not the best or highest path because there's so much to learn from taking detours or having challenges or more difficult challenges. Do I think it still has to be challenging? No, not always, but but the soul loves a good challenge, right? So when we are in those challenging or difficult situations, it's just making us and putting us into awareness, but we're also accumulating information. The most basic form of it, we are accumulating information. So the other side of this too was just like, there's no right or wrong path. And who am I? was having a conversation with them. And I was like, who am I to decide what's the right path for someone? I always feel, and I, I maybe some of you guys can relate, say, oh, I want them to do this, or this would be the highest path for them, or this is for the best for their soul. But, but who am I to be the judge of that? I don't know their experiences. I don't, I don't know what they've been through and how they see things and their perspective through their eyes and their experiences, because we're all our own little planetary bodies and worlds experiencing and gathering information in a different way. So I think we've stopped, stepped into the space where we think we know what's best for someone and their soul and what's for the highest good. But, but what if, what if it's not? And that's just our judgment and our perspective. So I think there's something asking of us to let people pick these doors and walk into the door that resonates with them. And who knows, we all end up at the same place at the end of the rainbow bridge. So I just thought I would share that with you guys. Um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> all right, guys. Bye.